Paul, welcome. How are you today, pal? Okay? I'm, I'm doing okay, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say first time, long time. Matt there this you is go. A pleasure. Like, how you, is know I, you know, I love the first time, long time, so we can get them. Uh, boy, how about the Marlins? Scooped <laughs> up in Philadelphia for a long period of time, you know, doing all this. A good story in the USA today, today about it, trying to, you know, figure out a way to run the hallways to stay in some sort of game shape. Uh, you know, a sort of a mishmash of a lineup, and they come around and they beat the Orioles three straight times. So, and they had beaten the Phillies before that. So, five and one for Miami. Who would have predicted that, Paul? What can you tell me? Let me hear. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is, uh, it's unprecedented with what's gone on the last week and a half around this club, but I think if we look back at what the 2020 season 2.0 was going to be, when you looked at what that 60-game schedule was going to be and how difficult it would, it would end up shaking out to be throughout the course of the season against teams like the Yankees and the Rays and the Braves and the Nationals and all that kind of stuff, it was going to be tough, so they needed to get off to a good start. They were 10-9 and nine against the Phillies last year, so you looked at that and said, okay, that might be a a good series to get off on the right foot. They had the Orioles, a team that's kind of going through the same sort of uh, build that, that the Marlins are going through. Miami might be a year ahead of them, so you thought maybe you can get off to a pretty good start in these first seven games, get a get some momentum rolling, and, uh, and maybe just start to build some confidence and throw out what's happened the last couple of years. Uh, listen, 60-game season with a bunch of postseason spots available, anything can happen. And I think that this team just has to do the little things right on a daily basis in order to win games. And, and listen, the way that the sport is constructed right now, you just have to win a game today. That's it. You can't worry about the next series. You can't worry about the next road trip. It's just find a way to win the game today. It's a little bit like the NFL, right? There are no uh, – it doesn't matter a clean victory, I, a dirty victory. It doesn't matter. Just win the game. Just I pick up the W's and get to whatever the magic number is, 30, 35, by the time this thing's done. And everybody had wondered, you know, how they contacted this virus in such a huge amount. Folks thought maybe they were – you know, not following protocols in Atlanta. Derek Jeter, had, you know, said what he had to say. We were in good shape in Miami. I had Anthopolis on last week of the Braves. He was a little annoyed that it kind of indicated that maybe it started in Atlanta. So, I mean, a very strange how that came down with the Marlins testing and everything else. And you wonder if that kind of seeped into the team, that they got annoyed. That everybody thought they really went out of their way to get into some sort of trouble there in Atlanta or in Philadelphia. What's your take on that for a sec? Let me hear well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I said this yesterday on MLB Central, and I'll, I'll say it again. I think it, um, you know, you know this. You, you look at things from a 30,000-foot view, and it's, it's easy to look at the Dodgers and the Yankees and these teams that are supposed to be good and praise them. And it's easy for teams, uh, for, for people on the outside to look at the Marlins. Uh, listen, they've lost 200 games the last couple of seasons. It, it's easy, right? They, they have been the laughing stock of baseball. It's so simple for people to just pile on and think, well, this team that wasn't expected to do much, didn't care about whatever it was, protocol doesn't matter, they're just going out and they're going to sabotage the Major League Baseball season because what do they care? Wasn't the case. Derek Jeter said it last week. Uh, the Marlins had their investigation. Major League Baseball there had their investigation. They were independent of one another. And what did they find? Guys went out to get coffee and clothes. This is a virus. It doesn't matter if you're a baseball player, if you're in tip-top shape, or, or if you're an at-risk person. You can get it by being careful. And I think what happened was maybe the Marlins were not irresponsible, but perhaps not as responsible or careful as they could have and should have been. They understand that now. We've seen uh, a lot more masks on the field. I'm, I know that they're testing uh, every single day now. There's much more spacing on buses. Uh, there are multiple buses to and from the hotel. Mm. These guys are going to their room, down to a banquet hall to get tested and get food and go right back up to their room. I mean, it's, it's not uh, uh, the, the glamorous uh, professional athlete existence that maybe it's been the last uh, however many years. I think it's a lot different. Um, listen, uh, again, a wake-up call for the Marlins and all of Major League Baseball and really for America. Anybody that's following this knows you've got to be careful right. because it's another opponent this year. Nobody's been able to get this thing under control. And Michael Hill did a nice job of coming up with some sort of mishmash to win some ball games. Plus the kid from Sochi who won the silver, uh, gold, a silver medal at the Olympics not too long ago. And here it is. He's part of the team right now, too. Give me some thoughts. Go ahead. 
It's, it's been fantastic. You know, I think uh, it's been a situation where uh, you mentioned Michael Hill. He said it in, uh, in the spring or maybe just before summer camp started that in a season like this, why not us, right? Everybody on God's green earth is counting the Marlins out. And, and like I said before, all they have to do is go out and win a game today. And if they're a completely healthy team, they've got some really good starting pitching. Uh, not only just who's in the big leagues when healthy, but also in the minor leagues. And this is a minor league system that's gotten considerably better, considerably deeper. This is my third year with the club. My first year, they were with 27, 28, and now they're, you know, four, five, six, depending on what scouting service you look at. Uh, this is a team that is, is just absolutely loaded up with athletes and loaded up with a lot of people who have ears and eyes just like I do and see that, that a lot of folks on the outside are giving the Marlins absolutely zero chance to do anything this year. And listen, there, there is heart, there is soul in that club. There is belief that they can do some, some things to maybe surprise some people, but uh, to also fulfill their own expectations. You have worked in New York for a long time. You watched Derek Jeter uh, play for, for 20 years with the Yankees. I don't think the guy liked to lose. He did not sign on to be an owner and CEO of the Marlins just to sit there and collect a check. He wants to win in Chapter 2 of his baseball life right now. Uh, and and he, listen, he's got uh, tons of money, I'm sure, could do whatever he wants. But he wanted to do this. He wanted to sink his teeth into this. And, and that winning mentality has trickled down uh, to the people in the organization. And listen, again, you go out on the field with a chance to win. And it doesn't matter if you're supposed to win 100 games or supposed to lose 100 games. You just go out there and try to play and win the game that you're that you're faced with that particular day. And a lot of games with the Mets now, 10 in the next 20, so they get a chance with New York uh, here down. Uh, do well against the Mets. You never know, right? This is an interesting stretch here playing the Mets now. A lot of ball games from here uh, for the next 20. Let me hear your thoughts there. Hey, I, hey, I just told you we're not going to focus on anything going forward, hey, that's right? right? Come on One now. Game at no, a time. Uh, listen. <laughs> No, but but you're right. I mean, listen, it's uh, it starts to become a, a bit of a snowball thing, too. Right. I mean, it, it just becomes a, a confidence thing. And I think that that's you know, we're, we're also enamored with uh, with analytics right now. Right. We love the analytics. It's going to tell us everything to to certainty what's going to happen. But this team right now is doing a lot of things that you're not going to find on baseball reference and fan graphs and baseball savant and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of camaraderie. There's a lot of belief. There's a lot of pulling on the same end of the rope. And listen, I, I'm sure that it's the same for for 29 other teams in Major League Baseball but think of it this way for the Marlins specifically they packed for I think it was going to be a six day road trip and they're going to be on the road for like 24 days wow. and not just on the road away from your family but you can't really spend time with your teammates either if you think about it right like you can't get into the clubhouse seven hours before the game and hang out and play cards and chill and get to know one another you're basically in your own room right. maybe a FaceTime or two uh, with 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 guys that's about it so you're just trying to maximize the actual personal connection that you have with somebody. It's still a team sport at the end of the day. And right now the Marlins are, you've got, what do they have, 30 men on the roster right now or 28 today? They've got 28 guys who are just doing their job right now. You know, the old Bill Belichick, Nick Saban thing, just do your job. They've got guys that are doing their individual jobs, and it's helping the greater good. Paul, good job. Well done. Keep it up. Uh, five and one, fun story. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Appreciate it. 